Okay, uh, hello. Yeah, uh, my name's Tom. I'm joined by my colleague, Adi. Uh, we're both digital curators of the British Library's Digital Scholarship Department. Um, as Christian mentioned, uh, we're presenting a paper that was also co-authored by our colleague, Nora McGregor, who can't be here um, today to present. So we have um, an estimated 170 million objects at the British Library, which is clearly quite a lot. Um, many lifetimes of digitization await us. And uh, through 20 years of doing so, I think less than 3% of the entire holdings have been, in fact, digitized. Um, nevertheless, we see digitization as integral to fulfilling uh, some of the British Library's um, ambitions to make our in intellectual heritage available to everybody for research and enjoyment. And um, our users do expect more than just digitized objects online. They want to be able to analyze uh, full text enriched collections at scale. Um, so with that in mind, we've, uh, for the last few years, been undertaking a series of collaborative initiatives to uh, look into uh, evaluation and research of available OCR and HDR tools that can be applied to some, some of our non-Latin heritage collections, particularly um, printed Bangla books and historical Arabic manuscripts. And uh, there are a number of aims with these initiatives that we've, uh, we're trying to realize, uh, as well as raising awareness uh, amongst potential users and users of our collections. We also want to form new collaborations, particularly with those working in uh, the computer science and recognition domains, to have a discussion, to create a dialogue around uh, the challenges and opportunities for automatic recognition of and transcription of historical Arabic and Bengali texts. And also importantly, we want to be able to um, create ground truth transcriptions that can form uh, reliable training sets for those working in the digital humanities to be able to text and data mine, um, as well as researchers, as, as we said, working in the computer science domain uh, who want to be able to train state-of-the-art uh, recognition uh, software on the collections. So I'm going to talk briefly about um, the historical printed Indian books, and then I'll hand over to Adi, who will cover the work that's been undertaken around uh, Arabic manuscripts and uh, how HDR has been applied to that. Uh, so we, uh, the printed books are part of a project called Two Centuries for Indian Print, which since 2016, and through funding from British government and AHRC, has been digitizing and making available online um, 1,000 uh, printed books uh, written in Bangla, uh, predominantly 19th century, late 19th century books. And many of them are in fact rare and unique and the only surviving copies uh, exist at the British Library. We're undertaking at the moment uh, digitization of a further 600 uh, books from the British Library South Asian Printed Books collection uh, that are written in Assamese and Saleti languages. So it's worth explaining some of the particular challenges for uh, OCR of Bangla, and in fact, other Indian languages. Uh, many of these points apply to that as well. Uh, first of all, we actually looked to work with Abbey Fine Reader, uh, but found that it doesn't support any of the Indian languages. Nevertheless, we did try it, and it returned um, a sort of random string of characters in its results, so, which wasn't what we wanted. Uh, so. We, there are additional problems. I'll come on to talk about the tools that we have used. Bangla is a very extensive alphabet with 200 or so compound character and very complex glyph forms as well. Uh, many of the glyphs are actually interconnected through the matra headline that runs across the, the words, so, which can present problems for segmentation. Um, as well as that, um, and particularly with our book collection, there was a huge growth in publishing in 19th century Kolkata with a myriad of publishers each adopting different typesetting practices and therefore we have in our collection um, an enormous range of um, different type, typographical styles um, manifested through sort of inconsistent spacing between words, font sizes, etc. 
Um, in addition to that, during the mid 19th century, the Bengali Renaissance um, was a movement that actually resulted in the language itself changing somewhat, and so we're also dealing with words that have become obsolete. Um, furthermore, there are, um, well, we're lucky actually that there are not too many physical defects in our books. Uh, we're not having to deal all that much with any kind of problematic material other than a few books that have some faded text. Um, and the quality of our digitized uh, scans are quite good. Uh, anything that does come back blurred, we always send back to be rescanned for it sh to, to try to work around a potential issue with um, OCR recognition. Um, so, bearing in mind that we couldn't use Abbey Fine Reader, we were approached actually by um, Prima, who advised us that it might be worthwhile collaborating on a competition as part of ICTAR 2017, um, which we did to try to overcome some of these um, challenges that I've just described. And so, through our collaboration with Prima, we had some good initial interest in the competition with 23 institutions worldwide from seven countries registering their interest, half of which were from India. And they seem to be a mix of commercial tech companies, um, university computer science and engineering departments as well were well represented. And the image you can see is actually one of the um, ground truth pages that we used with uh, Prima's <coughs> editing tool, Alethea, to define different textual and image uh, elements on the pages, as well as describing some of the structural layouts and tags The process that was followed for the competition, um, we worked with a very small ground truth of five pages. Uh, resource was quite limited from our point of view. Um, which, and these five pages represented um, some of the perceived OCR challenges that we could find in terms of different layout styles. And we worked with title pages, content pages. Most of the regular book pages are single column, uh, sometimes double column pages. Um, as well. And then we used the editing tool, as I described, to create the Ground Truth training set. Transcriptions were provided from India. Our project partners, Jadapur University, um, have provided those. And the Ground Truth was passed to the registrants for the competition to train OCR systems. We then provided a further 26 pages uh, that were untranscribed for them to pass through in order to be evaluated in the OCR. Um, I'll come on to talk about the results, and uh, it was also published in a uh, paper, which is available through Prima's website. So in terms of the uh, methods that were submitted, an interesting point is that despite 23 institutions um, registering, only three uh, methods were submitted. I think that's quite telling, potentially, of how challenging OCR for Bangla is. Uh, so Google's uh, Cloud Vision API is one of the methods. Uh, as well as two uh, methods submitted by the same team in India, Bangla OCR1 and Bangla OCR2, a group from the Indian Statistical Institute, um, Genosis Lab, and Griffith University. Uh, so a few things worth pointing out about this slide very quickly. Google uh, performed best in this competition with a 75% character error rate. It's worth, uh, the most meaningful part is the red bar as opposed to the blue. We found that some of our texts have an ambiguous reading order and so the red uh, is actually looking just at the parts of text that we could be sure of reading order to ensure that um, the results were evaluated fairly. Um, difference between Tesseract 3B and 3 and 4B and 4 is that uh, Prima utilized the Abbey Fine Reader binarization. So the B indicates where Abbey's binarization was used as opposed to the Tesseract default binarization. Interesting to see that that's made some diff positive impact as well in the results. Um, yes, so text evaluation was the primary concern. Layout evaluation was also undertaken, and again, Google performed very well with 78% um, accuracy, which is extremely impressive given the small training set. Uh, we found that all methods would, could probably be improved through um, you know, uh, robust binarization processes, creating dictionary support for the historical languages as well. Uh, quickly, a few more words from me before I hand over to Adi. Since the competition, we've largely been working with Transcribus and had some success for that. So it does support non-Latin languages. 
they advise you to create 100 pages of ground truth transcriptions, uh, which we have done, exactly 100 pages, in fact, uh, 13,000 training words. And we've achieved a 6% error rate on that, which from, again, quite a small, relatively small training set is, is quite impressive. Having said that, it's, we've worked with a generalist model that's kind of worked with different typographies. And we will need to actually take this a step further and create training models for different types to identify um, which publishers we can focus on actually batch processing if we're going to go down this route. Um, does require a lot of manual work, and again, we've been working with Jadapur University in this respect. Um, yeah, so future, future plans, we're involved with ICTAR 2019 again with Prima, and we will evaluate the results of that. Uh, we've been working with an enlarged, an enlarged data set for this latest ICTAR competition, so we're expecting uh, very good results. Continue working with Transcribus, and through this conference, we've become aware of some other tools as well that we'd like to try out. Um, we also have been running workshops in India, specifically around OCR, uh, very practical sessions. And dependent on further funding for our project, we will look to continue to do, to do that as well. And we'd be interested in collaborating with other people in this room for, for those workshops. So I'll hand over to Adi now. Um, uh, hope. So maybe before you switch, is there a question already for this part? Maybe one question. Um, so have you approached any of the competition participants to work with you, or are you still waiting for better methods? Yeah, we've been in conversation with Ashok, actually, um, since the 2017 competition. So we're, we're trying to work out a way to work together to um, establish a kind of a larger OCR workflow that can be applied to the British Library's non-Latin collections. And um, see who signs up for this latest six hours one. Um. <laughs> that would be my, my part of the discussion. <laughs> yeah. We're coming on to that now, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, the um, Arabic part of, of this presentation has a lot of equivalence to the work that um, Tom has been doing with uh, printed uh, Bangla books, uh, but there are some differences as well. So. Um, we had um, similar aims and methods, but we used different collections, and these collections had um, different challenges. So um, I'll talk about a collection which was digitized as part of um, a Qatar project, or um, as we call it at the library, it's the British Library Qatar Foundation Partnership, which um, is a collaboration uh, with the Qatar Foundation and Qatar National Library that's been going on for the last seven years, um, and it's still ongoing. Um, so this project has been digitizing archival materials from the India office records, which relates to the history of um, the Persian Gulf. Um, it also includes um, Arabic scientific manuscripts, which is um, what we focused our OCR efforts uh, on in terms of, uh, of Arabic language. So in 2014, uh, we launched uh, QDL, the um, uh, Qatar Digital Library, so it's a bilingual um, online portal which gives access to, um, to this material. Um, and we've heard quite a bit yesterday and especially today about um, challenges with, uh, with Arabic scripts, so um, I won't um, go into it um, too much. These are some examples from uh, our scientific um, manuscripts, so, so the writing styles are very different, so this is also handwritten, um, which has more, um, more challenges in a way than, than printed. Um, the language is cursive, it's joint, written right, from, uh, right to left, and the shape of the letters uh, vary depending on the context, um, depending on the position within the word, so you have the same letter, it looks completely different if it's in the middle of the word or at the end of the word, for example. Um, we ha also have the existence of some non-joining characters, so um, even though it's a, it's a cursive join script in, in general, some letters do not join with, with the following letter, which means that uh, there is a small space uh, within a word. We have long strokes along the baseline, and in addition, there is um, ascenders, descenders, diacritics, um, special notation above or below um, the, the, the baseline, which, which pose further challenges. 
Now, in addition to, to, um, to the actual script, um, there's also the physicality, of, the physicality of the manuscripts. And here are some further examples um, from the collection. So you can see um, existing existence of non-straight um, text lines, some show, show through, faded ink, decorations, drawings, illustrations, diagrams, non-rectangular shaped region, varying text column widths, different font sizes, uh, wormholes, and uh, other aging related issues. So, trying to see how um, text recognition tools can deal with these challenges. Uh, we launched a competition last year, so this was uh, my colleague uh, Nora's uh, work. Um, so, um, same as Tom, we're working with, uh, with Prima, um, also with Alan Turing Institute. I've collaborated with them. So, this was in, um, in the context of the International Conference on Frontiers in Handwritten Recognition, which took place last summer in Niagara Falls. Um, the competition was called RASM 2018. So, RASM stands for Recognition of Arabic Scientific Manuscripts. And we basically focused on finding an optimal solution um, for accurately and automatically transcribing this type of material and using the ground truth created especially for, for this purpose. So there were three challenges uh, in this competition and uh, participants could pick and choose which challenge they would like to, uh, to try out. So first one was page layout analysis, uh, page segmentation, region, region classification. Second, text line polygons, so text line detection. And the third, um, OCR, so text recognition. Um, the way we went about it, first step, uh, first step was uh, selecting the material. So we selected the representative um, data set that reflects the, reflects the issues in the material that has been digitized and that is likely to be digitized in the future. Um, step two after selecting the material is to transcribe it. Um, we've um, decided to do it through crowdsourcing um, in this particular um, instance and uh, so we explored um, the, the possibility of doing this um, through a collaborative effort. Uh, we util utilized um, a free and open source platform called From the Page um, on which people could, could uh, interact and could uh, do this um, collaboratively. Um, it started with a British Library team of uh, curatorial and translation experts. They produced the first 10 pages, which were then used as, as an example for the volunteers. And then it took only 18 days for 36 volunteers to transcribe 85 pages of this material, which was very impressive. After everything was transcribed, the third step was to create a ground truth. Uh, similar to Tom, we, use, uh, we used um, the software Alithia, which was Prima's, uh, Prima's created software to do, um, to do this work. So the ground truth creation uh, included uh, the page layout, text lines, and also then pasting the transcribed text into, um, into this uh, segment. So we prepared an example set of 10 pages and a valuation set of 85 pages. These are the methods that were submitted to the competition. Similar to, to Tom's case, there, were a lot, there was a lot of interest, but then at, at the end of it, there were uh, three, uh, three participants. So they used the example set of the ground truth and images to train their OCR systems and then run the systems on the evaluation set to produce uh, OCR results. And then the results were uh, evaluated by by Prima. So we have Google Cloud Vision, uh, we have KFCN, which was a method submitted by Ben Gurion University, RDI, a method submitted uh, by Cairo University, and then these participating methods were compared to systems that are currently used in industry and academia, so two versions of Tesseract and Abifine Reader. So in terms of results, first challenge, page layout analysis. Um, so you can see that uh, KFCN performed best in this, uh, in this part of the competition. We can see that Tesseract also improved from, from version three to version four, um, but it doesn't perform as well on, on um, handwritten texts as, as it does on, on um, printed material. And um, Tesseract and Fine Reader often misclassify the text areas as illustrations, hence the, the low um, accuracy rate. Second challenge, text line segmentation. So in this one, RDI uh, performed the best. So KFCN had a higher um, error rate than RDI. Um, and um, we could see that fine readers region misclassification 
from the previous challenge led to a larger proportion of mix, mixed, um, sorry, missed uh, text lines. Yeah, so, um, so KFCN is a method submitted by uh, Berat Kua from Ben Gurion University, and RDI was submitted by uh, Hani Ahmed from um, RDI company Cairo University. And um, KFCN participated in the first and the second challenge, so in the um, page segmentation and text lines, and RDI participated in the second and third challenges, the so text line segmentation and the OCR. So that's why sometimes some of them do not appear um, on the graph. So in this one, for example, KFCN did not participate. So um, RDI reached uh, the highest um, um, accuracy. Um, the Google result is also good, considering that they did not specifically train or optimize um, for this type of material. Um, in terms of things learned, um, one area of improvement is the region separation. Also, it was noticed that the marginalia, sometimes there's marginalia, um, close to the main text often disrupted the recognition um, of, of the main text area. And uh, same as in Tom's case, um, dedicated historical dictionaries could improve the OCR results. So, so this competition took place last year and uh, Nora McGregor was, uh, was, was leading on that from, from the BL side of things. Um, this year um, I, I replaced Nora in, in her role and uh, we've decided to run this competition again. So what we did is um, we used the same, the same corpus of material, so the same manuscripts, but um, we enlarged the uh, example set and evaluation set. So now the, the example set is 20 pages and evaluation set is 100 pages. Um, I think the main thing that we added this year is marginalia. We added that to, to the challenge. So both line detection um, and OCR. So we've, we've transcribed and segmented all the, um, the old stuff as well from previous competition. Uh, this time we decided not to go for the crowdsourcing. It was the, the, the number of pages was, was pretty small. This year, um, the BL translation team, specifically the Arabic team, was trained on Alithia. So what they did is that they, they transcribed directly into Alithia. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so this is still ongoing. So there, there are still no results. And in the future, I would like to try and test this with the transcribers because, because of um, Tom's results were, were very promising. So I would like to see how it works as well. And um, I'd like to explore um, collaborations, potential collaborations, maybe uh, with RDI, transcribers, uh, open ITI, maybe Google, so um, it's something for us to, to explore. Um, to sum up uh, this, um, this talk in terms of what's next, so we would like to integrate uh, this OCR with uh, our digital objects, so um, uh, what the library has um, on, the, on our IIIF viewer to make them uh, full text searchable. We're going to host all of these ground truth resources, uh, all the XML files and the images, um, make them freely avail available for anyone who's wishing to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to test their systems as well um, on te text recognition technology. So we're going to put it on the BL repository, which we are in the process of, um, of piloting. It's going to replace uh, our current uh, platform for uh, data sharing, which is data.bl.uk. We'll put it on the Impact Center of Competence website as well. And in the more maybe distant future, we would like to pilot workflows to um, OCR our materials at scale using more successful mef methods, and um, obviously to promote uh, these uh, digitized items to, to the target audiences, um, such as researchers. So uh, there's a couple of, um, there's a few resources there if you're, uh, if you're interested to read a bit more. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. No. 
And also from, from what I remember, after this competition, um, they tried to improve um, the, um, that API and it actually, at the end, it did perform better after making improvements which are specifically to, uh, to, this, type of, uh, to this type of collection. So yeah, so for example, RDI um, system was trained specifically on Arabic historical manuscripts. So yeah, you're comparing different systems and uh, different methods as well. So yeah, you're right. Thanks. Maybe we can cut off. Yeah. Possible. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Speaker. Okay.